first item would be adoption of the agenda. Second. Adoption then. All those in favor? Motion is carried. There will be a public hearing later this evening at 6.30, so if we're not done with our council meeting, we'll interrupt it briefly to uh, deal with the public hearing. In the meantime, we'll move on with the meeting. That's um, no delegations this evening. We have minutes of the November 4th council meeting for approval. Move. Second. Second. And approval then. All those in favor? Motion is carried. The manager report for receipts. Move receipt. Second. Uh, receipt then. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, I don't think there's anything to update there. We'll see what's carrying on. The next item is back to the start page here. The regional district. Thank you. Move that. No, Perfect. So that. November fifth, uh, <laughs> solid waste <laughs> and hospital. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Anything arising from those minutes that needs to be reported on, or can be dealt with later? Then we have some bylaws for adoption. The first one is the water rates bylaw, number eighteen twenty one. Second. Gotcha. Huh? On adoption, all those in favor? Motion is carried. And sewer rates by a law amendment 1822 for adoption. Vote. Second. All those in favor? And the garbage or refuse collection by law amendment for adoption and by law 1823. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, no new business. We do have some correspondence, however. Uh, first of all, from Heather A. Coalition during homelessness and updated plan. Move receipt. Second. On receipt, then all those in favor? Motion's carried. Um, any issues with respect to, they're just basically letting, letting us know that they updated their five year plan to show the uh, commitment that this uh, council has made on behalf of the residents towards uh, the ultimate uh, plan. Of course, that is subject to a favorable outcome in the uh, referendum, which is on the 28th. Any issues there? Go ahead. And it's just a comment that uh, I appreciated in the letter that the, that the town council was, uh, they showed appreciation that, that of, of their, our support in a different form, but they showed appreciation. And, and I think that group is very well meaning and want to work with, and make it work. Thank you for that. Councillor Price? Yes, uh, I, they show um, page 34. <coughs> Uh, 39, sorry, if I'm writing. Uh, the Comox Valley Recovery Centre is where they were proposing that um, uh, our 30,000 would be in the budget. Have I got that right? Yes. And I just wondered, um, does our bylaw allow us to spend that money outside Comox? I seem to recall that it says... That's a good question. I yeah, so we, if, if it doesn't, we should let them know... Director of Finance? Uh, Your Worship, it's not going to be coming from our capital reserve because the capital reserve addresses affordable housing in Comox. Okay. Uh, but what we'll do is we've been we've been putting thirty three thousand a year into that reserve on top of whatever we get from developers. So when we bring forward the next financial plan for twenty sixteen through nineteen through twenty twenty, uh, we'll ship thirty thousand out of there. And we'll show it as a grant to or a contribution to uh, the homelessness initiative, right? So it won't actually um, be coming out of a capital reserve. It'll be coming out of general revenue, and then it'll be up to uh, council working with them in some way to determine how we, what the logistics of that are. You know, do we pay the regional district or do we pay? the lead agency that's doing a specific project, do we get our, our pick of projects or do they tell us you know, where they'd like us to put the, the 30,000 a year? All those things have to be worked out. But the first step is that the other communities have to step up and pass the referendum. Mm -hmm. Good, and it's good to know that we have that flexibility in, uh, in that uh, messaging out there. And, and I concur with uh, Councillor McKinnon, it's great the messaging is out there, but we're we just participating in another way. Yes, indeed. And I think voting advance polls are already open, so they're open today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I encourage uh, people to get out and vote if we don't play the coma. So we not here. Uh, in any event, so any further questions? No? Seeing none, then that will just be received. And then we have the next item correspondence, uh, which is from Dominic Brady, regarding Shoreline Hardening. So uh, we'll move receipt. Yes. Second. Those in favor? Motion's carried. And I guess I'll turn this over to staff uh, around any issues uh, pertaining to the town of Comox jurisdiction in that area. Yeah. And I'll just ask Marvin to comment on that as to what what we do from a planning perspective. Certainly, within Comox Harbor, historically, um, we've allowed uh, seawalls, vertical seawalls, concrete seawalls. So there is no, the regulations within Comox Harbor are currently that seawalls over a certain size, like any retaining wall over a certain size, have to get a building mm -hmm. permit. Um, people who would require um, on that typically also advise that um, one of the things that they may wish to investigate uh, is the impacts on erosion on neighboring properties. But there may be some civil liability um, in that regard. Uh, when we start getting into uh, Lazo, Point Homes, Kai Bay, there we do have the development permit areas um, that are for pro the protection of habitat and fish habitat. There's some upland and then there's also fish habitat, so any um, seawall that uh, comes in there would have to show the protection of fish habitat. And there we are advising them in terms of information from the Ministry of Environment and DFO uh, that um, the soft armoring or essentially the terracing using natural vegetation um, or some other mechanism where you're doing a terrace and you're dissipating the waves is sort of the current best best management practices and we would require a biologist to sign off on that. So um, the we also have an exemption in that area, in those development permit areas for emergency actions to, to protect property. In that regard, uh, last year in the storms, a number of property on Hutton Road came in um, to, put, to confirm that exemption. And in terms of we were notified that they were um, that they had, had uh, lost significant parts of property or that their existing riprap typically in that area had washed out and they wanted to replace it. And so under that exemption they were allowed to do those works. All right, and I know that it, the, there's regional district lands in that area. Uh, do they have similar requirements to your knowledge or are they different? Um, regional district lands, uh, a new initiative, and I don't know if they've actually amended their uh, regulations or not, is um, to move to require the soft armoring or what essentially we're advising people where we do have fish habitat or um, so the Kai Bay, Lazo Road areas, um, that sort of terraced armoring. They're, they're trying, they're moving in that direction. They have a, Interesting name for it. The, it's, I believe they're saying they're prohibiting armoring, but it's not really prohibiting it, it's just prohibiting the straight vertical walls. Right. Like better, better design, engineering design. I don't know where they are in that process. I believe there was some consultation. I don't know if they have it right which yet. So it might be suitable to refer this also to the regional district, or perhaps refer the right to the regional district as well. Uh, other questions, comments? Councilor <coughs> My question was going to be is that uh, how, how, would, how will we respond to this uh, letter writer? And I, 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 I'm saying so because there's a jurisdictional issue involved. And it's, uh, I, I think I understand it, but I'm not, not sure I, 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 I do perfectly. And I'm, I suspect that this person is not just writing as an individual, but it's probably uh, talk to neighbors and perhaps, perhaps it's a neighborhood concern. And, uh, uh, and seeking advice from our CAO and Mayor how we should respond or whether it should be see the, the regional district that responds. We, we will be drafting a response as to what our approach is on this and what our responsibility for. In some cases, if, if we're not issuing permits, it's a private property matter that uh, is really in hand. Uh, we are, as as Marvin mentioned the use of soft landscaping is something we have proposed for our Lazo Road uh, protective area along with, to retain that road. 
it's a mixture of the riprap and the wood to be able to uh, diffuse the, the flow of the water, but, but not the hard edge as, as was referenced. So that, and that's what we'll point out to the writer and, and also refer them to the regional district for those other matters. Thank you. All right. Okay, any other questions, comments? Well, thank you for that. We'll craft a suitable response. Um, and then we have under correspondence uh, several letters regarding your contribution number two. I'll oh, receive those. All in one. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I no doubt this is still being dealt with at the regional district, but uh, further comments here? Can, we do have three reps on the sewage commission. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's a huge issue and, and a very difficult one. I just reread the report from the advisory committee uh, this morning. Uh, I think, too, there is, does seem to be some confusion. And I noticed in the first letter it speaks to the Sewage Commission uh, ranked the Courtney Pump Station as its number one choice, uh, which is, is, is not correct. The Sewage Commission or the... Um, Sewage Commission of the day preceding us uh, when they did the full study that looked at many sites in Comox, uh, the uh, Courtney Pump Station was not even part of that study. So this, the Courtney Pump Station option came out of that advisory committee that was made up equally of, of citizens and uh, the representation. So, um, yes, yeah, so I think there is a lot of confusion and I, I know there's great concerns about the cost of that option in that it's certainly in the initial stage uh, is a double what it would cost to do the number two pump station. And um, it, getting figures for what the pump station would cost, it, it's hard to take them out of the reports. They, well, they say that they're up to 50% either way. So there is a very much a guesstimate. And to actually do the study that looks at the Courtney Pump Station site, because it is like an orchestra that they, they all work together. and. And because it was never considered through all that um, master sewer planning, which I think came to close to a million dollars over the years to put the Common Valley Master Sewer Plan together, that was never considered. So to actually rework the figures to come up with something that's um, much more exact, because you have to know what you're doing in each pump station, uh, it could be up to $75,000. And I know, um, and I know it's hard to, for the regional district staff to, you know, that everyone is sort of really trying to make the situation work. Uh, but I, I, I know that, um, that from reading uh, Mark Rutten's replies, uh, there is a concern about moving away from infrastructure that has 10 to 20 years life left in it and, and could even have more. When, when those figures are put together, they're always on the conservative side so that you can start building your, um, your, the money up to, to pay for them. So to actually lose that infrastructure value, not only of the trunk line, but the infrastructure value that's in the Courtney Pump Station and the Jane Place one, um, uh, it, it, it's definitely a very difficult um, step to take. So it, it is still ongoing as uh, we're following. I, um, and, and I don't know whether um, anyone who had more to do with the advisory committee has anything to add. I, it, it, certainly the ranking within the sites and they brought more sites onto the table than in that original study, and that included the Courtney Pump Station and the um, beach access. Uh, the ranking, ranking is very subjective. I was reading it through, and things like, for even for something you think was very straightforward, like technical suitability, 
Um, the site that the regional district bought in the Cota Beach area was ranked as the same at the same technical value as the beach access, even though one's in an optimum elevation and one was never in an elevation that was ever considered at all because it was always thought to be too low. So it, it's, it seems like it's a very subjective, um, so how those figures came about. So anyway, it's, it's a work in progress and um, as I say, it's, it is a, it's a very difficult situation and I know and particularly as the um, beach access is zoned park and, um, and as we're reading, you know, the concerns of the impact on that down the road. So uh, it will definitely be a lot more discussion, I would say. But, uh, All right. Anything to add, Councillor Swift? Well, I was just going to add that <clears throat> um, because I sat on that advisory committee, and, and I think uh, you kind of alluded to it, but part of the issue with the ranking system was that the... Um, criteria were not weighted in any sort of way. Okay. So every piece of criteria that was asked to be evaluated had the same weight. And um, it, it's probably not an ideal way of going about it because um, some of the criteria were very subjective and very um, vague almost. So I, you know, Part of the problem is it's just not practical at this point to open up the master sewer plan. And it would be years and years of uh, work and agreements between all kinds of people. Um, we have to stay the course and get that line off the beach. You know, I just am really concerned about these winter storms and as I keep saying. It's not just this winter, it's next winter and the winter after, even if we are able to proceed at, at, at a pace at this time. So, um, you know, I think we try to listen to each other as participants in an advisory group. I think the um, person that came in to run it did, you know, a good job, but there were some faults with the, with the system that created that ranking the way it turned out. I, I believe that. So. All right, thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, any further comments? Well, yeah, sure. I think that, um, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of unknowns out there with the sewer master plan, too. Um, if the Greenwood trunk and the Hudson trunk line go through, that can take some of the pressure off of the Courtney pump station which could increase its life, especially if we put a, another pump station in Proto, that could also expand its life. I think the logistics of, my understanding is that the pump station site in Courtney could be too small if we have to upgrade it, so that would mean looking for a new pump station. We've already gotten a letter from Project Watershed saying we don't want to put it on the new Courtney Field Sawmill site, so here we go again. Then to run the line through four, four jurisdictions and have to expropriate land and all that could go on. I, I just think the logistics of that are, are just not reasonable to do. Um, and it's 11 million more dollars that we have to come up with in upfront money. So um, I think those kinds of issues make it really difficult. Um, and, and I agree with Maureen, we have an issue on the beach, we have to get on with this. And it, it's been put off long, far longer than it should have already. And I think we really tried to work with the group to try and, and do it. And I guess a little bit of my frustration was I was at the last meeting with the, with the group, and they liked the Courtney Pump Station for obvious reasons. It doesn't get anything near Croto Beach. No one at that meeting other than Croto Beach people thought that was the right way to go. All staff and everybody else at that meeting believed that somewhere in the Croto Beach area was the right way to go. I think we actually thought the Beach Street one was probably the best. The compromise was the McDonald Wood one, and that was an agreement that we agreed to at the end of that meeting. So I found it a little frustrating when they showed up to the regional district meeting, and then they're out talking to the press, talking about Courtney Pump Station again, because that was not the agreement that we had at the end of that meeting. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, but I believe that's the way that was done. Right. So, so that, you know, I mean, it's one of those anywhere but my but my backyard, and yet we've got to do something. So um, I, I guess in a nutshell, that's really where it's at. 
and we're working through the logistics of the Croto Beach, um, or of the uh, Croto Road piece, and hoping that we can get on with this and get it going because we can't leave that line uh, exposed on the beach forever. It's one day we're going to run into a real problem. So that's my take on it, anyway. Uh, just from the staff's perspective, uh, regional district is obviously taking the lead in terms of dealing with highways and so on, but obviously we have a role to play in terms of the, the park and the road allowance and so on. Are things moving the way they should at this moment, or are they still held up, or are there things that we need to do? They're, they're starting to pick up the pace on some of their efforts. Uh, we've received a few more communications uh, related to this project, so and, and we do keep uh, getting updates at the technical advisory meetings that staff participate in. So it's, it's starting to move and, and we should get more progress. Uh, there's a survey that will occur and, and we'll know the area we're dealing with and uh, things are starting to slowly move along. Okay, sorry, on this side here. Uh, yes, I, and, that, and that just brought up a, a point. I mean, you know, definitely uh, the hydrology study, I, I believe that's number one, hydrology study. and. Well, equally, number one is uh, our conversation with the Comox First Nation, and uh, you know I would see those as being the top of the list. Um, just getting back to the um, Willamar Bluff Beach, I did talk to Mark Rutten because you know people have said, well, maybe we could do some reinforcement on there and, and it delay uh, action into the future when you know whether it's. 20 years into the future, or, um, and uh, he was very clear that um, there isn't a lot more we can do because basically the line is surfacing at points, and, and so the gabions are with the rocks are protecting it. But you, in, in a storm with the rocks and the logs being thrown around, it's difficult. And he is very clear you can't go above the beach line because then you create all other problems as we know you when know, we were just talking about uh, armoring and protection of banks that once you start coming above the beach level you create currents and, and it could have an impact on the, on the bluffs and um, it's just uh, it, it completely changes your beach action so um, there really isn't um, a lot to do uh, that hasn't been already done before, and, uh, and no one really would like to see the line broken, that's for sure. Yes, Gabion baskets. I remember learning that uh, those words about 12 <laughs> years ago when I sat on the Sewage Commission a long time ago, so uh, it's been a long progress, uh, a long process, sorry, to get to this point and hopefully move forward. Councillor McKinnon. Uh, just a quick question is for, for all council councillors, all the members of council councillors. Uh, I, I know myself I've been referring people to, to those that sit on the commission. I feel badly about that. So much. And uh, and to the regional district and to their website, etc. to keep abreast of it. And I know I went to the last meeting so I was a little bit more informed about it. Uh, uh, your worship uh, suggestions is there uh, and members on the on the, uh, the regional board there uh, is uh, is that the who we should reference people to uh, or fine mm -hmm. yeah, I think so uh, and that's the regional district uh, through the sewage commission is the lead on it and they do have communications people there so I don't know if they've got an FAQs section up on this yet but I'm sure they will at some point yeah, I'm not sure if they do yeah. I think something else that, that uh, we need to think about too is that our the Courtney pump station is running pretty close to capacity at the moment, and so if we don't do something to ease the pressure on that, we're going to have to go and put some money in the not too distant future. It could be up to a couple of million bucks to upgrade it, which would just be completely wasted if we then went back and put another pump station in. So that there's another piece there too that if we just do it, we can save that that money and it's you know with with the pump with, with the uh, line exposed on the beaches you know that's uh, you know it's time we've got to get we've got to get moving so mm -hmm. all right well all speed and all reasonable dispatch <laughs> yeah. okay thank you for that uh, I mean 
we don't need to necessarily respond to this. This has been responded to by a large by uh, yeah. Mr. Rattan at the regional district, so we'll just receive the file. <coughs> All right, so uh, I believe that's correspondence. Uh, no late items or the delegation, so reports from members of council. We'll start with Councilor Swift. Okay, um, I started off by attending the solid waste meeting, uh, and of particular interest, to, I think, to our residents is the Curnex. Recycling Depot was slated originally to be closed, and now it's uh, going to remain open. So, um, so I was really pleased to see that because I know people were really unhappy when the other ones closed. I'll be sure to let my spouse know she's going to be really happy. About yeah, <laughs> yeah, and also the Courtney Country Market one is remaining open um, for the time being. They're still exploring, exploring the, the question. Um, I guess the hope is that MNBC is going to eventually take it over. But for the, for the time being, can it still remain open? So that's good news. Um, and at the hospital meeting, it was decided that the tax requisition will remain the same in order to build up reserve for future needs. So um, that was the main part of the um, hospital meeting. Um, and then as the acting mayor, I attended the North Island College fundraising event, TASTE, which was a really nice evening. Uh, there were some presentations by students, and they had displays around the room and showed you opportunities to uh, pieces of equipment that you could buy or programs that you could support if you wanted to. So it, it was um, very well done. <clears throat> um, I attended the sewer meeting, which I think we're probably pretty up to date. The commission is proceeding with the next steps of acquiring the property at the end of Proto Road and um, consulting with the um, uh, Comox band. I think it's fair to say that people are still not happy with the site choice. So um, they're proceeding as best we can. I attended the Remembrance Day ceremony and it was nice to see that it was so well attended and sunny as well, so that's great. <laughs> and then last night I attended the uh, Farmers Institute meeting and uh, we heard about some of the challenges that the farmers face. Uh, most of their concerns need to be directed at other levels of government, but um, by and large I found it really interesting and, and the exchanges were very respectful. So uh, they put all the politicians up in the front in the hot seats. <laughs> we weren't sure what we were doing there, but I'm waving it. So um, it was an interesting meeting. I was looking for the pitchforks. I didn't see any. No! <laughs> <laughs> Carefully tucked away. Yes. Now, surprise. Yes, well, I was um, hosting the Friends of Public Society of Forest Reserve AGM, so that was... Um, uh, I, wasn't, I was in a different hot seat. <laughs> so much, um, um, perhaps more friendly. Um, so that's what I was doing last night and why I didn't attend the uh, Farmers Institute. Um, I also, since our last council meeting, attended an ABICC executive meeting down in Nanaimo, uh, the Sewage Commission meeting, which uh, has been mentioned. But, you know, it's certainly been brought home and there was a big presentation from McDonald Wood Park Society um, that there is important uh, archaeological remains down there, the midden, and they brought material from the study that was done when the land was going to be developed. And it's you know, over 4,000 years of history and an undisturbed part of the midden under that road right of way, too, as well as the, the salt marsh. Um, I also um, Went was at the water committee where we talked about the or started to move ahead on the con conversion of the Sandwick uh, Waterworks Improvement District to an RD service. This is the part of the Sandwick area which is outside the boundaries of Courtney. And the Sports Commission, and we received the preliminary budget, uh, followed by the committee of the whole where we had. Uh, huge number of delegations, <coughs> six I think it was. We had Steve Watson from um, talking about the Pentridge River and the changes they're making to the warning system so that the sound will be directed more to the river and so we'll have more impact where it's needed, particularly areas of high usage and not out into the community. 
and that they were going to go into a wireless system so that uh, trees on the line won't be a deterrent with the alarm. And, um, and also their work on the new substation at Bucky Bay, $28 million project. Uh, we had a presentation from Natalie Suzuki from the Ministry of Environment on the air quality, uh, talking about the air quality big measure is in Courtney, which I think is the worst point of it, but certainly looking at the Comox Valley, and we are one of the two worst places in the whole of BC, Vanderhoof, I think, was the other one. And um, so, you know, they are concerned. I think part of the problem is it's like um, being a valley, it's like a river flows, air flows, and it, and it collects. So they were just saying in about changes the province are looking at in, uh, in outdoor burning and things like that, and how to update wood stoves so that they are um, much more effective. We had a presentation from UROC, uh, the, the group from Cumberland who are the mountain bikers, and looking at um, uh, cycling trails in Cumberland and looking to increase the $10,000 budget they get through the regional district uh, grant money. They wanted to increase it by 50500 50, which, or up uh, two, I thought it was up 250. No, I think they want it to be, oh, oh, maybe making it, yes, they want it 50, and so they're asking for an extra 40, 40 45, 40,500. 40, and, um, and, 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 and Councillor Grant did make a good point to them too, that it's kind of hard when Cumberland is pulling out of services to be, you know, we can only look at regional, you have to you, you have to be part of the region to um, you know to truly benefit from it. And, uh, although they were coming as a society, but I think they did get the message that maybe they need to talk to the council. <laughs> um, we had um, Dan Levy from the transit study. Um, he's with Dan Tech Associates, just talking about the study that he did on the. Comox Valley Transit, and um, that there's need for routes reorganising with hubs. That you, you, we are not very efficient, partly because it's a difficult system to run, but you could do it much more efficiently. And uh, suggesting that maybe a local commission would be useful to, to advocate on behalf of transit. Um, we also have the Island Coast on Economic Trust. Um, ice team uh, just talking about what they do and um, listing the projects that they've helped us with and very generously and again uh, Councillor Grant did ask because she mentioned the marina one once you've given one can you come back for another and she did say yes <laughs> until we run out of money <laughs> <laughs> which we're closing in three and a half million dollars less so. okay <laughs> so um and then we had uh, presentations by um, Kim Stevens from CAVI on asset management for service development and the ecological accounting protocol so that putting a value on the cost of doing it wrong versus doing it right and the value of natural systems. You know, poor guy, he was really near the end of it. <laughs> I don't know how it's to say so. Yeah. Sorry, God, I'm sorry. yeah, it was a very, very long time. Yeah meeting and um, yeah so and we did we did also do some other work we did approve our transit plan that looks at uh, the three staff holidays being by transit by donation as well as the air show and um, and uh, improving ridership and we had the regional growth strategy with almost declining numbers we were almost running out of a quorum um, the uh, report, how you measure with how you're doing, it's difficult because, particularly between censuses, getting those figures. So, just one quick question on the transit study. I mean, the CAO and I were able to that. It's very interesting, I found, to uh, hear some of the re uh, recommendations. What is the next step for that? Is that go back to the regional district staff for further consideration and they bring you a report, is it? Definitely, yes, yeah. And decisions to be made. And all that around whether the 
there should be a commission. It very much pointed to that it would need to be a local commission governed by regional district bylaws, because once you go to the provincial commission, yeah. it really is out of your control, and, and I think they even take on their own taxing authority. Right, and there was some reference as well to other revenue sources that if we wanted to take advantage of a, a gas tax, for example, yeah. mm -hmm. that we could fund transit in that way. I know one other thing I saw in that report, which was of interest, is that it reference the fact that Courtney gets about 60% of the service, pays 40% of the cost, so I've got that in my head for next time. Yeah, yeah. Mayor Jangle complains yeah. about policing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't agree with those. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry. So, I, I, and I think I, was, um, I think that uh, I think that covers it from my right. notes. I've got scattered. So. Oh yeah, just on the uh, yeah, on the indicators for the regional growth strategy, reducing solid waste is improving, uh, water conservation remains about constant, food security, farmland protection has been no net loss. Uh, those are the main ones. Um, and I also uh, I, I spent, went to the Remembrance Day um, at Glacier View Lodge with my dad. And uh, I also was at the Curling Lake Grand Reopening and I threw my first rock. It's harder than it looks. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I should have had lower heel shoes on too, that didn't help. I did, um, in the windstorm and rainstorm at the beginning of the week, I did the Brooklyn Elementary School walkabout for active travel where we wanted to be out in the morning when the little kids, but not many of them braved the hurricane winds. So, um, but I did take lots of notes. Uh, it was the RCMP and the school board, and school trustee and parents. And um, certainly there didn't seem to be a lot of uh, enthusiasm for the proposal of a roundabout at the four-way stop at Highlands. That, that was you know, uh, the Pritchard and yeah. Guthrie. That is considered a, a major problem. Um, but there was concern, particularly from the RCMP, firstly that people aren't very good at using the uh, yes. roundabout. And also because there's a lot of kids crossing, at the, the time when you've got the real problem with the traffic, you've got the kids crossing and how you... And, and so they, everybody said traffic lights just passing his arm, because then he can have the controlled pedestrian crossing. Uh, that they were very happy about. Half an hour each. Day. Yes. Yeah. 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 And this is a third solution, I don't know. But, uh, well, that one's quite a ways off in our transportation yeah. plan. We'll probably get to it. Yeah, the four-way four stop is still considered the safest versus traffic lights. Just for, from a speed perspective, okay. yeah. speed, speed and, and pedestrians, mm -hmm. uh, the interaction in that regard. Well, they were pointing out that, that what happens is the traffic is piling up so much that people, and then the kids are always yep. going, right. and then no, people get well. impatient, yeah. and then they just go, and then, you know, that concern that in that a child could get hit. So. Well, it's just, yeah, it's human nature to be impatient. And People can choose other routes sometimes, not always. Mm -hmm. And that was also pointed out that that does happen, and so rather than using the, yeah. the major route, people are going through yeah. residential areas. Yeah. Anyway, it's an yeah. engineering problem. <laughs> okay. And then the parking on the, um, on the uh, bicycle lane, that's a major concern. Yeah. And they had suggestions of maybe those things that you can drive over that's a market off that can... Anyway, I'll pass it all on Thank to you. Shelley yeah. and uh, she can do what she wishes with it and or she can certainly give us advice. You gotcha. Thank you. Okay, Councillor McKenna. Barbara, that is a tough act to follow. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to start making things up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think the report was like, it should have been at the meeting. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, we, we appreciate that. Some short snappers here. Uh, uh, November 5th, there was at the Comox Valley Community Resource Fair, which um, showcases support agencies here in the valley at the, at the Courtney Rec Center. 
November 6th, the uh, Town of Holmox Ray Cross, the Youth Recognition Awards. We had a committee meeting and, and we'll, we'll be bringing nominations next week to Council for consideration. Uh, Remembrance Day on November 10th, the day before, I, I went to Highland Secondary School for their service and uh, they had a military serviceman there who was a Highland grad of 1983 and served with Boomer, Boomer a Boomer's Ride uh, in uh, Afghanistan when he, he was killed there. Uh, and I mention that because that was a very good way to connect with the students and make it, uh, uh, it was a very moving ceremony because of that. And I thought Highland did it very well and I'd like to acknowledge them. Uh, in the evening on the 10th, I went to Cadet Remembrance uh, Memorial Service along with Mayor Ives at the mall. And uh, on the 11th, uh, as many of you did uh, here in town and, and to the reception at the Legion after. Uh, November 13th, Ma Maple Lake Committee meeting at the Cumberland Council Chambers. And last but not least, some good news, uh, uh, I attended a BIA uh, Comox Rotary Club Town of Comox meeting um, regarding the water park partnerships. Uh, and it's good news in that uh, the, in the first step, it sounds like the Rotary Club is interested in being a partner. And uh, um, so we left the meeting feeling pretty good about that. Richard attended as well, and uh, uh, that's, that's good news all the way around. Okay, great, thanks. Councilor Reina. Yeah, well, jeez, um, I'll just make it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just defer to somebody else. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did go to a monthly community justice meeting, and I've left the uh, yearly report in uh, with low. Yes, and it's going to circle around. Right. At AGM is next week. Um, like all of you, I uh, attended the Remembrance Day celebration in downtown Comox. One of the things that I've heard many times over many years is the location of the cenotaph. And what I would like to do is work with the town, with the wing, with the legion, and perhaps over the next year find a location suitable to all parties to relocate that. You know, we live in a, a large military community. Um, we have, I believe I did rough estimates we bring in approximately fifty-two million dollars to the to the valley from uh, salary dollars from the wing, and and while that location is suitable, it's not perfect. We all heard people um, standing at the end, we, at, at the ends of the streets there on uh, uh, Church and Port Augusta. You can't hear the uh, the uh, PA system. You certainly can't see anything. And I think it's time that we move that somewhere in the downtown area. And, and I'd like to work with, I've, I've had loose conversations with the construction engineer people at the wing who could work with the Legion. The Legion is certainly in favor of moving it, um, you know, and maybe we can all come to some kind of partnership. Well, sure, anytime I've talked to people at yeah. the Legion, they say, leave it where it is. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I've talked to Stu McKinnon, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he's, he's all in favor of moving it. But... We need to find a suitable place. I mean, it's, it's largely their call. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, but I think we need somebody to uh, to take the reins on it because, it, you know, we all hear it at Remembrance Day celebration, and then a couple weeks a month fade, and, and nothing's ever talked about it again until the well, next time. And once a year, that. Yeah, yeah. But but the the military community is here, 365 days. Oh a year. no doubt. No. I, I, I just don't yeah. know. I mean, there's been so many over my time on council, I'm sure previous councils, so many different ideas and suggestions, mm -hmm. and it always comes back to leave it where it is. Yeah, well, loosely, you know, I've just thought where we have that little circle there at the corner of Port Augusta and Comox Ave, and maybe somehow fitting it in there somewhere would be a nice place. Yes, yeah, that has been suggested before. You know, it's something yeah, it's suggested that, at Marina Park. I mean, it, yeah. if you want to make inquiries on your own initiative, yeah, uh, yeah. My own. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one's been uh, beaten around a lot, mm -hmm. and one of the issues is when you've got a hill, when it was down in Marina Park, a lot of people didn't like it because it was hard getting back up the hill, and then yeah, you when got it was over here in front, yeah. then it was a problem because of the hill again, and then, so the more times you try and find the right location, the harder it becomes. And, and, so and quite frankly, you're never going to accommodate the many people that do come up from our way, but mm -hmm. no, unless you put it in the middle of a runway somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, it's, I mean, if you think there's some some solutions, that well, there's always solutions. And not, just to follow up on what Councillor Arnott said is that I think that uh, that it's important for us to, to pass on that information what we hear as councillors. And I, I hear every year that it's a wonderful event and uh, uh, of coming downtown. Sure. But 
the, the sight, eyesight, and the sound and whatnot. Sure. And I, I, it's, it's no different in Courtney. It's, it's no different in Cumberland. Yeah. It's no different in any community up and down the island. There's always going to be limitations on what you can do. And, and the, I guess it's a testament to the fact that so many people come out now. Five, ten years ago, that's right. It's, you wouldn't have been that. So you're getting large. I mean, it is a victim of his own success, and it's great to see people out. But you know what? Uh, I mean, by all means, bring forward solutions. But I'd be prepared to go with Councilor on that if you want to go with uh, come back with thing. something that uh, yeah. is palatable. And, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I just wanted to bring something yeah. up. Yes, yeah. something that we all hear in the crowds year after year. And I was waiting for the letter to come in. But yeah, it that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was an all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Let us know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Grant. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I attended the Remembrance Day ceremony in Courtney because a uh, young nine-year-old gal was in the choir and asked me to go and listen to her sing. So I ended up at the Courtney one, and it was quite crowded as well. So they were all commenting on how uh, how big the crowd was at that as well, and it was the same sort of situation as what the crowd was big and all that anyway. Uh, I also attended the opening of the curling rink where I had to give a little two-minute speech and then throw a curling rock, and I was equally as bad at it as you were. So. <laughs> in, in your ideals? <laughs> well, it wasn't that <laughs> often, but <laughs> anyway, uh, and then... Uh, at the Sports Commission meeting, one thing we did do was we did um, approve the uh, new software that is the shared software for, the, for all of the places, so that was done. And a slight increase in the fees over there to help cover the new wage costs that uh, after, after we settled the, um, the agreement with the, with the workers. I went to the Farmers Institute meeting last night. I went to the sewer, the water the RD and the RD in camera, and just a little note on the air quality testing. Um, apparently the testing equipment that they use in Courtney is the top-notch stuff and they haven't put it in all the other areas, so that may have a little bit to do with part of it, but really um, they feel that it's because we're in a valley and it's really, there's a lot of wood smoke and, and the question was asked, what's different between that and Duncan or Cowichan or any of those places, and they said, well, not, I mean, they don't have the answers for that. Um, one thing they did uh, mention as a recommendation was, I guess, wood boilers are starting to make a bit of a comeback because they're cheap. And so they were there going around saying those are probably the worst for air quality you can get and it might be something that councils would look at putting a ban on installing new wood boilers in any community, which I don't think anyone's ever. Is that a commercial use? Or? Yeah, for commercial use, oh. yeah. So I don't think anyone's actually done that. I can't imagine, but apparently, in their opinion, they're making a bit of a comeback. It's the newest thing, yeah. So the newest old thing. Yeah, and so uh, I also met with the uh, Comox Rotary Club regarding the water park, and I also talked to the BIA about the water park, and they were quite uh, quite willing to get involved and see what we can do on that. So, okay. of course, we need money, but they've got some, and if we can find some, we can probably do that. So, yep, yeah. and that's my report. Thank you, Councillor Margaret. Thank you. Uh, first, I attended the seniors board meeting. And my goodness, what an amazing little organization they are. They continue on with their good news stories. First of all, uh, on the agenda, of course, was finance. And they worked so hard with their baked sales and their pancake breakfasts. And that kitchen is doing such a great job that they had um, they had a eleven thousand dollar increase in their in their budget this time, this time as compared to last, which was excellent. And then we went on to renovations. Apparently, they're planning to focus on renovations in the kitchen in the coming year. I'm looking forward to that one, too. And then, there was, it's actually a very interesting meeting. And when I compare it to our council meetings, <laughs> there's very little similarity. Because halfway through the meeting, they, someone stopped and said, you know, I think I could describe everything that happens at our seniors meeting as peaceful and harmonious. And I thought, that's very good, wonderful. <laughs> and then from there, it carried on, and they, they patted themselves on the back because the association is growing so much. They're having a great time having fun, and they all agreed it was a great place to be. So it doesn't get much better than that. I also attended the Comox Strath Kona Waste Management Board meeting, and uh, there were 
much, much discussion and many decisions made, but I chose to, to focus on uh, the closure of the solid waste management. It's a very, very complex capital project I'm learning, and for a variety of reasons, and with the work that's still yet to be done, the planned closure at the end of November has changed, and the major projects expected now will be completed by the end of the year, and the minor projects by spring of 2016. And also, it appears that the project is going to come in the budget, which is good news. And the hospital, um, Tom Sparrow, the chief project officer, made a presentation to the board uh, and reported that in September, uh, there were 543 workers employed on that project, and 78% of them were locals, which was good news for our local economy. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the, NI, the hospital project and Tandem Health Partners, working in with the province, the Industry Training Authority, the local school district, North Island College, uh, North Vancouver Island Aboriginal Training, they work together to develop an apprenticeship program and other training and employment opportunities. And in October, the Industry Training Authority recognized the hospital, our hospital project, as one of its champions of apprenticeship. So it's an outstanding byproduct, obviously, of our hospital project, which was another good news. Now, a really important thing, and I guess I, I shouldn't treat it lightly, but parking was a large part of our discussion. Should we pay for parking at the new hospital parking lot or not? A decision wasn't made, and we still have more to come. But also, a big announcement that happened was Island Health has announced that food services will be kept in-house and produced by local island health employees, which was something that pleased everyone. Sure. Have they said that they're just joking with that green color, or that is that what it's really going like to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, one other thing. I'm waiting like, for another committee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping they're, I'm just hoping they're going to peel that off and choose a nice color. And I have to say, Don't too, if I might... Uh, really with Remembrance Day, as everyone else did, I uh, attended. But I, I chose to attend the candlelight service down here at the Cenotaph. And of course, it was a howling southeaster, and the rain was belting down. But the story gets better, because here we are, and, and umbrellas and, and hoodies are, are the order of the day. Two gentlemen are speaking, uh, holding a microphone underneath a golf umbrella. Just on the edge of the golf umbrella are two young cadets standing guard. And the cadet that I was able to see through the crowd, the small crowd, was this young man and he had his head bowed and he moved not a muscle. Meanwhile, all of the water from the umbrella is going down the back of his neck, plus all of the rainfall, which was not light, was also finding its way down there. And that young man did not move. I think he deserves a commendation. <laughs> all right, uh, we have a few minutes left, so I'll be brief in my report um, before the public hearing convenes. Um, before I left on my trip to China, I attended the meeting, several meetings in Vancouver, one on the climate leadership uh, team and the final recommendations that were being brought forward to cabinet. So there was a live meeting and a couple of teleconferences right to the end of October before I left. And to my knowledge, the uh, Minister of Environment has been briefed as well as the Premier and Cabinet members on that set of recommendations which uh, remain, uh, unfortunately, at this point, still confidential uh, advice to Cabinet. But we're very hopeful to see in the next week in all likelihood when uh, the Premiers meet in Ottawa before going to France uh, to see what our Premier and her Cabinet are going to bring forward in terms of a new climate action plan at least recommendations. Those recommendations, whatever they are, coming out of Cabinet and the government will go through another public process in the new year. Uh, so it will be public comment period uh, through January. Exactly when that will start, I don't know. And uh, the idea is that it will go and form part of the budget discussion. And the uh, new uh, fiscal plan for the province starting as early as next spring. So very interesting process, lots of hours in that. But I was actually glad to see that come to a conclusion. We'll see what happens with it. 
I also attended as a UBCM appointee to the MMBC uh, Advisory Committee, and that was a very interesting meeting face-to-face -face in Vancouver with representatives on that committee, which include other elected officials, staff, as well as uh, industry representatives. So we got a good update on the first year of operations of MMBC, actually about a year and a half into it now. And the main outcome of that I can report on is that we're going to set up a meeting with the Minister of Environment in January, where we can sit down with her and uh, try to troubleshoot some of the issues with getting uh, MMBC in all parts of the province, including uh, our area. We're among uh, about 10 large communities that are not yet serviced by MMBC. And there's some fiscal issues there that we need to uh, set up of MMBC that hopefully we can resolve. And largely, it's because the newspaper industry is not yet part of that, as I'm sure a newspaper scribes would tell us uh, from their own uh, businesses that uh, there's some issues still going on there. Uh, with respect to uh, other events, the poppy flag raising, the Mayor's Cup golf uh, tournament check uh, presentations, and um, I know Councilor Grant was there. I was also at the Farmers Institute and the ceremonial divisions at HMCS Quad or C Cadets put on at the mall. And of course, all the Remembrance Day activities. Um, Port Alberni Mayor Mike Rattan and CAO came to visit me and the CAO here. He gave us a nice uh, yellow cedar uh, Port Alberni. Uh, tribute, and really we were just to talk about some issues around uh, uh, what they're calling a Central Isle Vancouver Island Mayor's uh, Committee that uh, the Mayor of Port Alberni is getting going, and it'll be run through ABICC, and around issues such as uh, dealing with you know infrastructure funding and other issues uh, of common interest, and we talked a bit about some of our shared experiences. So we'll see where that goes, and there may be a pre-ABICC meeting. And as you know, um, went to China as part of the Premier's trade delegation. John Watson uh, was there as well. I paid my own way on that trip, and I can tell you that it was worth every penny. Uh, we had two days in Beijing to start. Um, I think air quality here is an issue. Uh, Beijing's a whole other uh, ball of wax for sure. Um, and of course, the real focus there was LNG and the Premier's efforts to promote that industry to uh, China in particular, to that part of China. Um, receptions and uh, presentations on LNG. Also had an opportunity to meet with one of Economic Development's uh, clients, I guess you want to call it, Natural Glacier Waters, who run a bottling plant south of Courtney, and they have an office in Beijing. So we talked to them there. There was then three days in Guangzhou, which is the south uh, coast near Hong Kong, and that uh, was to celebrate principally the 20th anniversary of a twinning arrangement between the province of Guangdong and the province of BC. Uh, that is an area of China where most of the Chinese immigrants came from during the gold rush and the um, building of the railroad, and there's a long history between BC and that part of China which used to be called Canton. So there were lots of events and activities around that, presentations on clean tech and investment Seminars also attended uh, not only the, the, the celebratory dinner, but also another dinner on another night with the members of the Cantonese Chamber of Commerce. We were told there would be about 30 people there. There was probably about 150. And uh, myself and a uh, councillor from Richmond and a councillor from Burnaby were the guests of honour, which was quite overwhelming, actually. I think I, my picture is now taken with every smartphone in the uh, in the audience, <laughs> and we handed out lots of business cards and made a lot of good contacts. And then the last day, day and a half, was spent further south in Shenzhen, which is uh, a city that started in about 1985. It's now a mere 20 million. It was a special economic zone set up to deal with the transition of Hong, Hong Kong to China. And there we met with uh, the mayor of Shenzhen. A city, as I say, of 20 million, average age 31, and also met with uh, residents uh, here in Comox who bought the uh, Union Street Grill and bought a house here. And we toured their mall called Central Walk, which is uh, probably about twice the size, as, twice the size of the Civic Center in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And then uh, John Watson and I uh, participated in Hong Kong and the Terry Fox Run, which was being run for the 35th year there. And it was 30 degrees and very humid. <laughs> we, we, we lasted a little bit longer than the Premier did in that run, but uh, not too much longer, and then it was time to head home. So John uh, went on to Vietnam, where the uh, Minister of International Trade went, 
for a couple of days, and then he was back to Shanghai to participate in the trade export or food export show. He also participated earlier that week in a seafood export show. A um, couple trinkets, really. Um, I'll pass on. Put in the in the um, cabinet. This time is running short here, but so we were all given a. Uh, a nice scarf to wear, which we didn't wear because it was too darn hot. <laughs> but uh, we got that. We got a nice picture of a bunch of people celebrating the 20th anniversary. And what else is in here? Uh, those are the main things. And then I got a bunch of materials around the investment stuff. So if we do get visitors here from China that are interested in investing in BC, we do have some material to give them in their language. So it's <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we can't read it. <laughs> I, yeah, some of it's English. And then uh, another gift here from the people in the mall that they asked me to pass on here. So it was a very busy time. Um, I think I'm finally over the jet lag. Um, but uh, as I say, anyone who has, has been there with uh, been the Far East would know how much of an experience it is. I know Councillor McKinnon and others have been there. So I certainly commend it to anyone to go on a trip either for business or pleasure. Next time, hopefully, a little more pleasure than the business that I, I was on, but certainly uh, a great visit. And I think a lot of uh, good positive leads were generated, particularly for economic development's focus on uh, really value-added uh, seafood and uh, agriculture exports to China. And uh, some of that was discussed last night with the pharmacists. <coughs> so that's it in terms of that. And thank you, Councillor Smith, for chairing the meeting and looking after things while we were here. So we don't have anything else other than media questions at this time? Yes. Yes. And you know I have a conflict of interest on the sewage pump. So we'll get into too many details and I'll pass sure. it on to my John Carter here to ask more questions if he feels necessary. Sure. But just uh, one point for clarity, um, and I was confused, Councillor Ken Grant, um, you said that the field sawmill and the social project watershed that they weren't in favor. But I think the letter from Paul Hogan says that they didn't see a conflict. So I just okay. want to put that out for the record on your three minutes. I All think right. it was just the reverse. All right. That I, was the only thing. I may have misinterpreted that. Yeah. yeah. That was the only thing I pointed out. The others are probably... You're pointing it out for the record as the record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mike. Don't stop. No. <laughs> all right. Well, you're all by the same company. Anyway. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And yes, other questions, certainly uh, your other counterparts can certainly ask afterwards. All right. And any questions from members of the public? I don't think so. I'd like to hear other people here for the public hearing, which will start momentarily. So with that in mind, a uh, motion to adjourn the council meeting. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Motion's carried. So take a brief recess. We'll give it a minute to... Uh, <laughs>